Welcome to the Living the Dream Podcast with Curveball. If you believe, you can achieve. Welcome to the Living the Dream with Curveball Podcast, a show where I interview guests that teach, motivate, and inspire. Today, we're going to be talking about perseverance, and I'm going to be talking to someone who has let nothing stop her. It is Wynne Charles. She is an author and a speaker. Wynne was born with cerebral palsy, but she has not let that stop her. She's released a book. She's a speaker. She travels all around the country, and she's also competed in a triathlon. So we're going to be talking to her about her story and cerebral palsy and everything that she's up to. So, Wynn, thank you so much for joining me today. Well, you are certainly welcome, Curtis. And for those of you who have hung around me for a while now, you know that I have a podcast. You know that this is my life's work. You know that raising awareness for cerebral palsy for is my life's work. And for those of you who are new to me and new to my condition and new to my name, welcome, number one, and welcome to the wild ride of cerebral palsy. And what cerebral palsy is, is it's a um, lack of oxygen brain condition that I acquired at birth. I was born in 87. At one pound, 13 ounces, 27 weeks. You guys figure that one out. And I was supposed to be born in June, supposed to be born in September, was born in June. And I had never, ever, give me a challenge, I face it. So give me a challenge of a triathlon and give me a challenge of writing a book. I take it head on and say, let's do it, because that's my belief. And so I'm going to let Chris take it away and ask me some more questions. Well, you've already answered one, what, <laughs> what is cerebral palsy, but talk about comp- competing in that triathlon. To tell us about oh, that and how that happened. About that. Well, that was a interesting little adventure and I'm still on that little adventure I just don't talk about it that much but I was and am a triathlete now how I did it back then is completely different than how I do it now because I did it with a totally different teammate and do it now was a totally different teammate. I do be tried for us now instead of my own team, which was team we win. And those of you who have been around me long enough, you know that team we win got the facts. And we, my cousin and I, competed in the Kong Ironman. And when my cousin approached me about the doing the Kong Ironman, she said, well, number one, I have a surprise for you. Number two, I want you to do something with me. And I'm like, just cut to the chase. This was right after my mom. My mom passed away in 2010. So this was right after my mom passed away. And I'm like, just cut to the chase. Don't say I have a surprise for you unless it has something to do with your aunt dying and you're coming out to move in with me and help me. But no. She goes, I have a spice for you. And she goes, I want you to uh, try athlons with me. I think that would be fun. Well, when you think about it, to get to the Kona Ironman, and when I was, I still am, I have cerebral palsy. So I'm like, oh, 
this is great. You want me to do what? Race in one of the top triathletes, triathlons in the world. Thank you very much. They call it one of the top triathletes in the world. I mean, big time pro triathletes compete at Kona. So there's little me working out like a mad woman. And we did, we, my cousin and I did that for a year. Finally, it turned into such a, I won't use the word I'm thinking of, but it, the word begins with an S and ends with a T. So let's just leave it at that. The reason why it became the word that begins with an S and ends with a T and has the second letter of the H. Uh, you guys know what I'm talking about. The reason why it became such a shit show is because of my teammate wanted to compete at Kona and not raise awareness for cerebral palsy. I, on the other hand, also wanted to compete at Kona, win the dang thing, and raise awareness for cerebral palsy. So we had two different values going in, and it just turned into a disaster. And then I decided to take a step back, continue working on my books, and continue uh, doing the what I was doing along with podcasts at the at that time I started after I got home from Kona, believe it or not. And then um and then I hooked up with another team, B Try for Us out of Sarasota, Florida and who remembered me from my Kona Ironman triathlete days. And they were at St. Anthony's. St. Anthony's was a triathlon that we did and they did um, to raise money for St. Anthony's Hospital. So what B Try for us does and me, I was so fascinated by this. They were so fascinated by my story. Is they put the disabled in kayaks. They put the disabled on the back of a bike. And they run with the disabled. So they, we was, I was so fascinated by that. That they put average disabled people on back of bikes in kayaks in and they pushed them that I wanted to know more. And so of course the director follows me on Instagram, knows that I've moved and says and I had a dream of doing people had asked me once I came home from Kona, will you ever do that again? I said, yes, I will do a triathlete, triathlon again, but it will have to be with a totally different team. And so B Try for Us approached me, try as a triathlon, T-R-I, and so they approached me knowing that uh, I wanted to do a triathlon they had a new board member at the time who also wanted to do triathlon, long distance triathlons. Most of the kids that they work with can only do the strengths to sit up and do short distance or marathons or what have you. I'm the only one that has the strengths to do. Um, long distance triathlons. So in December of 2023, I flew down from Phoenix, Arizona to uh, Daytona and did 
the Daytona Clash, was still working on the me going back with B Tri for us to Kona, to Kona, yes. But first, I need to have back surgery. Now, the back surgery I opted into because 16 years ago, I had a scoliosis fusion that did not heal correctly. And so they're going in on April 23rd to fix that and make me all better. And then as soon as I recover from that, I will go back on the road to um, train for a Kona Ironman and then try to do that again and win the dang thing this time and then be completely retired from doing triathlons and just continue motivational speaking. Okay, well, tell everybody about your podcast and your book and what we can expect when we read oh, and listen to you. My, pod my podcast is a C CEO of a disability, and it could be found all over, all over the place, you guys, wherever you listen to um, podcasts, including those smart speakers we all have, and then including the Amazon smart speakers, Google, it can be found all over the place. And my books could be found on my website or on Amazon.com. If you guys look up I, comma, W-I-N, I win, that's the original book that kicked this all off. And since then, I have lost both my parents, had to move to Phoenix, Arizona by my choice. All this has been my choice. No one said you needed to move to Phoenix, Arizona. But I decided to move to Phoenix, Arizona for a better quality of life. So unbeknownst to me, my job followed me down here, and I've been doing content ever since 2010. Okay. Well, I know in your bio you talked about how you faced different types of abuse as a woman with a disability. Oh, yeah. Do you want to talk about that to, with oh, the yeah. listeners? I will talk about that. That story is public. I got emotionally and physically abused on June 23rd, 2019. Glenn and I had just lost my dad in May. My abuser was a female. She happened to be my godmother. She happened to be my mom's sister. So godmother abused me. And godmother, I don't think godmother realized that she was abusing a mandatory reporter, what they call a mandatory reporter, because I had a job at one point that was teaching. And when you become a teacher, one of the things you learn is how to mandatory report. And so a mandatory reporter, when you get that um, certificate or get that um, in your teaching background, you have to report it for the kids. And so I don't think she realized that she was abusing a mandatory reporter. And the man, man, mandatory reporter, me, and just to let you guys know, teachers can do it, priests can do it, um, social workers can do it, uh, depending on case, and then counselors all across the 50 states, well, they have to do it, mandatory reporters. And so basically what a mandatory reporter does is call adult protective services on kids' case, child protective services. And so basically what a mandatory reporter is, is when a child comes to them with, let's say, bruises all over their body, 
and that's abnormal for kids to have. Um, and let's say they say, mommy hit me, and they tell the teacher that. And then the teacher is supposed to call child protective services. Well, in my case, I don't think my aunt realized that she abused a mandatory reporter. So now I'm like, well, what do I do as a mandatory reporter? Do I call adult protective services and say I'm a be and say I just got abused, I'm disabled, or do I have another mandatory reporter do it? In my case, I had a counselor and I don't know what tipped her off to this day. I don't know what tipped this counselor off, but she asked me, do you feel safe at home knowing that I was disabled and knowing that the disabled have a high risk of abuse? 85% of women who are disabled get abused because we can't move and get abused because the abuser likes to abuse. And so I tipped the counselor up. I said, yes, but this is what ha happened. She calls adult protective services, which I was going to do anyway. I was just waiting till the right time. I was going to call adult protective services on myself. And I was going to get the number, but the counselor tipped it off already. And so the next week when I went to counseling, I did not know that the counselor called Adult Protective Services. I go out to go, it's the end of my counseling session, I go out to find my aid. And now my aid has... My aides were knowing to drop me off at appointments, go to the houses. I thought my aide, I don't see my aide. I thought my aide was in the bathroom or in the car making a phone call or in the car reading a book. So I, if she wasn't in the bathroom, I was going to go down, um, down the elevator and wait for her and call her when I'm down in the lobby. But a perfectly stra strange person to me said, are you looking for your aid? And I go, yeah. And she goes, he goes, your aid is an adult protective services. Well, adult, when my counselor was an adult protective services, they would have shared a wall, not careful. Adult protective services was two feet away from me. And so I'm thinking, uh oh, here we go. Here we go. My counselor did what I was going to do in the long run. And then I had to go to adult protective services. They had to do what they had to do. And turns out that the Pickens County cops called the, and cops call abusers in all 50 states, and Pickham County was asking Colorado for you guys, just to give you a reference. Turns out, Adult Protective Services and the Pickham County cops called my abuser. My abuser thought she didn't do anything wrong, number one, and she put me in the shower against my will, and then um, laid me back on a bed naked, and I won't tell I won't tell you what tipped me off to because it's too graphic. I won't tell you what tipped me off to reporter, but something did tip me off to reporter. Number one, you're not supposed to touch another person's body without them knowing. And number two, you're not supposed to do this thing that she did. So I have had no contact with my abuser since 2019, and I have had 
contact on and off with her accomplishment with um, her, the person that she was with at Fields of Fire, they, Adult Protective Services, said, yes, you can have uh, communications with the person that was with your abuser. She's okay, but your abuser not. And I would not have conversation with my abuser anywhere. So that was that. And that was right after that I lost my dad, too. And so that's why I semi-moved to Arizona. And I semi-moved to Arizona for, my, for financial reasons, too, and a better quality of life. Well, I'm definitely sorry that that, that uh, situation happened to you. Tell the listeners about any upcoming projects that you're working on that we need to be aware oh, of. Oh, I'm working on my 12th, my 13th, my 14th book. And so, and I will still continue my podcast and that can be found on every platform and known to man. And uh, yeah. So at your website as well. So we can keep up with everything. You're so, so if you guys want to keep up with me, my website is ACO with a disability dot we believe dot com or better yet, just Google my name. Just use those screen readers to type into Google win W I N Charles C H A R L E S and Google has my name. And they have yeah. And so go to my website, follow my projects, follow my podcast, Google my name and then you guys will be all set. All right, ladies and gentlemen, follow, rate, review, share this episode to as many people as possible. Keep up, keep up with everything that Wynn Charles is up to. She's definitely an inspiration. I have a lot of respect for her, and I'm glad I finally got to get her on the show. If you have any guests or suggestion topics, see Jackson102 at Cox.net is the place to send them. As always, thank you for listening and supporting the show. And Wynn, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you, Curtis. For more information on the Living the Dream podcast, visit www.djcurveball.com. Until next time, stay focused on living the dream.